Every day you wake up, you brush your teeth, you take a shower, and dress up. You get into the car, or you take your bike. Then you drive to the work, or you ride on a bus to the university. The mentioned step-by-step -step process of going to the work, or even in the university, is an example of algorithm. So, what is an algorithm? Well, algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure which defines a set of instructions to be executed in a certain order to get desired output. Algorithms are generally created independent of underlying languages. It can be implemented in more than one programming language. Sometimes, algorithms are written using pseudocodes, which is a language similar to the programming language to be used. Pseudocode is a term which is often used in programming and algorithm-based fields. It is a methodology that allows the programmer to represent the implementation of an algorithm. So, why are algorithms important? Well, algorithms are pervasive, meaning it spreads widely throughout an area. They also organize thought and action like computational thinking. They can also be made very precise for implementation on computers, smartphones, and other devices. They can be in a variety of programming languages like Python and Java, and can also be in computer programs, software packages, and mobile apps. Basically, writing an algorithm to solve a problem offers these advantages promotes effective communication between team members, enables analysis of problem at hand, acts as blueprint for coding, assists in debugging, and becomes part of software documentation for future reference during maintenance phase. We also have the characteristics of algorithm. First is an ambiguous. Algorithm should be clear and unambiguous. Each of its steps or phases and their inputs and outputs should be clear and must lead to only one meaning. Second is input. An algorithm should have zero or more well-defined inputs. Third is the output. An algorithm should have one or more well-defined outputs and should match the desired output. Fourth is finiteness. Algorithms must terminate after a finite number of steps. Fifth is feasibility. Should be possible with available resources. And the last one is independent. An algorithm should have step-by-step -step directions which should be independent of any programming code. The following are the good and correct characteristics of an algorithm. Has a set of inputs. Steps are uniquely defined, has finite number of steps, and produces desired output. We also have different categories in algorithm. We have search, sort, insert, update, and delete. Search is an algorithm to search an item in a data structure. Next is sort, an algorithm to sort items in a certain order. We also have insert, an algorithm to insert item in a data structure. Next is update, which is an algorithm to update an existing item in a data structure. And the last one is delete, which is an algorithm to delete an existing item from a data structure. So now that we know a lot of things about an algorithm, how do we actually write an algorithm? Well. There are no well-defined standards for writing algorithms. Rather, it is problem and resource dependent. Algorithms are never written to support a particular programming code. As we know that all programming languages share basic code constructs like loops, which is do for while, flow control, the if-else, and many more. These common constructs can be used to write an algorithm. We write algorithms in a step-by-step -step manner, but it is not always the case. Algorithm writing is a process and is executed after the problem domain is well-defined. That is, 
we should know the problem domain for which we are designing a solution. Let's try to learn algorithm writing by using an example. The problem is to design an algorithm to add two numbers and display the result. We can write it like this. Step 1. Start. Step 2. Declare three integers A, B, and C. Step 3. Define values of A and B. Step 4. Add values of A and B. Step 5. Store output of step 4 to C. Step 6. Print C. Step 7. Stop. Algorithms tell the programmers how to code the program. Alternatively, the algorithm can be written as Step 1. Start add. Step 2. Get values of A and B. Step 3. A plus B is to C. Step 4. Display C. Step 5. Stop. In design and analysis of algorithms, usually the second method is used to describe an algorithm. It makes it easy for the analyst to analyze the algorithm, ignoring all unwanted definitions. He or she can observe what operations are being used and how the process is flowing. Algorithms can also be used in constructing a flowchart. Now, let's talk about algorithm analysis. Algorithm analysis is a termination of the amount of time and space resources required to execute it. Algorithm analysis deals with comparing algorithms based upon the number of computing resources that each algorithm uses. The efficiency or running time of an algorithm is stated as a function relating the input length to the number of steps, known as time complexity, or volume of memory, known as space complexity. Efficiency of an algorithm can be analyzed at two different stages, before implementation and after implementation. And here are the following. A priori analysis which is a theoretical analysis of an algorithm. Efficiency of an algorithm is measured by assuming that all other factors, for example, processor speed, are constant and have no effect on the implementation. And a posterior analysis, which is an empirical analysis of an algorithm. The selected algorithm is implemented using programming language. This is then executed on a target computer machine. In this analysis, actual statistics like running time and space required are collected. We also have algorithm complexity. Suppose X is an algorithm and N is the size of input data. The time and space used by the algorithm X are the two main factors which decide the efficiency of X. In time factor, the time is measured by counting the number of key operations such as comparisons in the sorting algorithm. While in space factor, the space is measured by counting the maximum memory space required by the algorithm. We also have space complexity. Space complexity of an algorithm represents the amount of memory space required by the algorithm in its life cycle. The space required by an algorithm is equal to the sum of the following two components. A fixed part that is a space required to store certain data and variables that are independent of the size of the problem. For example, simple variables and constants used program size, etc., and a variable part, which is a space required by variables, whose size depends on the size of the problem. For example, dynamic memory allocation, recursion stack space, etc. We also have time complexity. Time complexity of an algorithm represents the amount of time required by the algorithm to run to completion. Time requirements can be defined as a numerical function, t of n, where t of n 
can be measured as a number of steps provided each step consumes constant time. For example, addition of 2 n bit integers takes n steps. Consequently, the total computational time is t of n is equal to c multiplied by n where c is the time taken for the addition of two bits. Here, we observe that t of n grows linearly as the input size increases. Now, let's talk about asymptotic analysis. Asymptotic analysis of an algorithm refers to defining the mathematical foundation of framing of its runtime performance. Using asymptotic analysis, we can very well conclude the best case, average case, and worst case scenario of an algorithm. Usually, the time required by an algorithm falls under three types. First is best case, which is the minimum time required for program execution. Average case, which is the average time required for program execution. And the worst case, which is the maximum time required for program execution. We also have asymptotic notations that are the commonly used asymptotic notations to calculate the running time complexity of an algorithm. The O notation, the Omega notation, and the Theta notation. First is the big O notation. The notation O of N is the formal way to express the upper bound of an algorithm's running time. It measures the worst case time complexity or the longest amount of time an algorithm can possibly take to complete. Second is the omega notation. The notation omega of n is a formal way to express the lower bound of an algorithm's running time. It measures the best case time complexity or the best amount of time an algorithm can possibly take to complete. And the last one is theta notation. The notation theta of n is the formal way to express both the lower bound and the upper bound of an algorithm's running time. And that is algorithm. If you like this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more educational videos. Before we end this video, we want to thank the following sources who made this video possible.